I'm Jason Knight and uh, I'm Senior Estate Operative at Painton Zoo. Yeah, it's a relatively new role and position, though I work with uh, Lee Riggs. Between the two of us, we are the estate operatives, but we, we try and mix it up with the hard work and having a laugh. So I've been working at the zoo here since 1985. Majority of that was on the animal department, so I was worked with most of the animals over the years, but predominantly on the mammal department as a senior mammal keeper. And then I, I wanted a slight change, so I got into horticulture and got a job on the, the garden department. It seem, seems like the most suitable position for me to be in because I can bridge those gaps between animals and plants. It's good, I could communicate well with the keepers and you know, help, help them to feed their animals. Uh, browse is a term that we use for basically fodder for animals. Um, so that can be with giraffes and rhinos, it can be trailer length branches. We try and present the, the browse in, in the sizes that the animals require. So for, for monkeys, we'll cut shorter length, you know, anything from sort of two foot to five or six foot long. For the giraffes, they want it slightly longer. They, they'll take it as large as we can deliver it. To feed a browsing animal, um, that kind of material, it's good that it's presented in a way that the animals have got to work a little bit for it. So, you know, the giraffe keepers will hoist up the browse to a height so the giraffes have to stretch to eat it. Obviously, they've got different sized giraffes, so, you know, they've got to make sure some of the shorter giraffes can reach as well. Um, but, you know, likewise for the rhinos, you know, so it's not just thrown on the floor for them to eat. If you if you put it in a, like a, a vice contraption as they have in the rhino house, it can be presented at a good level so they have to sort of reach up and, you know, use, use certain muscles to, to get the food and obviously chew in it so it's good for their teeth, good for their jaws, good for their behaviour, also good for their digestion. So it's, all aspects are looked into. Some plants aren't that palatable to some animals, but they are to other animals. So it's a learning curve, the whole thing. But over the years, we've gained quite a lot of experience in what certain animals eat. Uh, and we try and give them a big variety of different materials as well. So they're not having too much of the same thing. We've got a lot of woodlands here. We've got a lot of native plantings. We have some sites that are not on show to the public that we've invested in over the years. So fields we've planted up with small trees. Some of those small trees we'll leave to become mature trees and others we'll use as working trees. So there's, there's a good amount of sustainability to our practice. So we'll, we'll coppice at the right time. So you can, it's basically a cut and come again but you might leave it for sort of six or seven years before you go back to the same plant and cut again so that you're resting it. Another part of, of my role and Lee's role is to, to work around and inside the animal enclosures. So that could be keeping the fence lines clear for inspection, um, but it also could be uh, tree work, removing things from enclosures and, and planting and designing new enclosures, new species that zoo might be looking to go into in the near future. Always thinking horticulturally, you'd, you'd think, is, are the plants going to survive in, in that environment? So you're, you're looking for the right plant for the right place. So, you know, you wouldn't put a, a, a plant that likes to have good drainage in a, a boggy area. So it's selecting suitable plants for the environment that the animals are going to be living in. So once you've got healthy plants, you obviously have to consider, are the animals going to destroy that plant? You know, whether it be a tree, it might need a tree guard. Uh, are the animals going to eat that plant? Is it toxic? Um, you don't want to put a browsing animals in an enclosure that's full of nice edible plants because it, it will be gone in no time at all. Uh, but you also don't want them eating things that are going to do damage to them. So sometimes it's, it's a balance between the two. When we do tree work around the zoo, again, we'd always ask ourselves, what can that be used for? Can it be used for perching? What, animal, what sort of size is that? wooden material is it is it more suitable for a parrot or a monkey or a gorilla or can it be made into an enrichment item and always have adopting an attitude where you don't like wastage you don't just discard things you try and think of a use for the material that we work with i think it's it's an ex, it's an exciting role because there are, there are levels that we can just keep taking it it's it's a it's a new role here at painting zoo but it's a, it's a role that Maybe some other collections have somebody doing similar work to me, but there's so much scope 
to taking it much, much further. As I said earlier about planning ahead with planting, you know, you don't see the rewards of your plant, certainly with trees for browse, you don't really see the rewards for quite a few years. But I'm now, or the last five or six years, I'm reaping the rewards of the plantings I, I did 12 years ago. Um, so it's, it's th seeing the bigger picture and, and not thinking of today, what do the animals want today and not giving a damn about tomorrow. I like to go home at the end of the day thinking that I've, I've done good stuff and certainly by my standards, I'm satisfied with what I've done.